Welcome! In today's video, we're going to cover networking on Digital Century. So we're going to really quickly go over some of the basics we covered in other videos, just to be thorough. We're going to go into Network and Sharing Center and take a look at our adapter properties. This is where we set the IP addresses for Digital Century. Now we have two, Local Area Connection and Local Area Connection 2. Local area connection we recommend we use for the office network to tie in to the security network. For local area connection 2, we recommend that be the security network containing the cameras and any remote clients that we'd want to use. So with that recap out of the way, we're going to take a look now in DS admin and IP cameras because one of the common questions we get is what to do if there's no communication between DS and the IP camera. So we're going to log into DS Admin. We're going to go into VAU. In VAU, we're going to click on the computer name, which will load the VAU information. And then we're going to click on the IP cameras tab. Here, we can see the IP address for all the cameras currently set to record on this system. We can also see if they are active or inactive. Now with our IP camera IP addresses clearly visible, I'm going to open up command prompt and drag it slightly under our IP camera list so that way both are visible at the same time. Now with our IP camera list visible, I'm going to ping the IXP camera, which is the dot sixty-eight IP address. Now let's take a look at the output from the ping command. We can see that we have received four replies from the camera. All the replies took less than a millisecond to answer. This is what we want to see on a small network. If our response times are very large or we notice there are gaps in responses and we don't get four responses back from the camera, this is an indication that there is high latency on the network. High latency can lead to video degradation, most commonly seen as artifacting or gray video. Now if we look at the statistics summary under the ping replies, we'll see that we received four and lost none. Any loss can result and will result in video degradation. To resolve that, that will need to go back to the on-site IT personnel. If this is one security network that is mixed in with the day-to-day -day network, it might be advisable to separate the day-to-day -day traffic from the security traffic. Now there are cases when four pings won't reveal the issue. So we're going to need to ping the system continuously to see if we ever receive any of those telltale issues such as very high response times or lost packets. To do that, we're going to type in the same ping command, but at the end we'll add a dash T. What the dash T command does is continuously ping the selected IP address. It will do that until stopped. To stop the ping, press Control C. It will then display the ping statistics just like a normal ping. Now the next helpful command we're going to look at for DS is hostname. With the host name known, now we can verify if DS Admin is set up correctly by pinging the host name. Now as you can see, this looks different. We actually are looking at the IPv6 address for the DSSRV. 
This is because with Windows 7, the default ping command when pinging a host name will show the IPv6 address. Keep in mind, while Windows can have an IPv6 address, it is not compatible with DS. An IPv4 address must be used. In order to see the IPv4 address of a host name when pinging in Windows 7, type in ping space the host name space dash 4. This will show the IPv4 address. Now that we have verified the IPv4 address, let's see how that relates in DS Control Point. To do that, we're going to open up Control Point and go into Setup. In Setup, we're going to go to Manage Systems. And in Manage Systems, remember, if we're connected, we must first disconnect. And then once we are disconnected, we can right-click and select Edit. Here at the Edit System Settings page, we can see the name, the host name, or IP. Either can be used in this field, which can be obtained as we talked about earlier. Lastly, and what we're going to talk about is the port. That's 18772. This is the communication port used for DS to communicate with the client system. What is not shown here is also the SQL ports. Both of these ports must be open in order for DS to establish a communication. Now about ports, typically on the internal network, meaning you're inside the same network that we're connecting to the DS system on, ports usually are not an issue. This comes into play when trying to connect either remotely using the Pelco mobile application or remotely using DS control point. It's at that point that ports plays an important role. Sites like YouGetSignal.com can be used to determine if the correct ports are open. I've included in the YouTube description our knowledge base article that covers all the ports used to connect to a DS system. If you find that these ports are not open, please check with the on-site IT personnel to have those open for you. And that will do it for our network troubleshooting guide for DS. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. And remember, at Pelco, we've got it all covered.